This is the M1 Mac Mini, or the box for it at least. I'm using mine to record this video. It was released at the tail end of 2020 and was one of the very first Mac models to feature Apple's own in-house Apple Silicon system on a chip. It excels at everything from music production and video editing to media consumption, Photoshop, web design and even a wee spot of gaming. It's perfect. Almost. There are really only two big issues that I have with this Mac Mini. Port selection and storage. And that's where this comes in, the Satechi Type-C Hub. But before I take a closer look at it, let me tell you why I bought it. The M1 Mac Mini does feature a fairly respectable selection of ports. You've got an Ethernet port, two Thunderbolt slash USB-C ports, an HDMI port, two USB-A ports, and a 3.5mm headphone jack. The problem here for me is that there just aren't enough of them, and as I use external cameras to make videos for this channel, the lack of an SD card slot is really quite annoying, as this means I need to use a dongle to get footage onto the Mac itself. Also, and I realise this is very much a me problem and won't necessarily affect everybody using a Mac Mini, the fact that all the ports are on the back of the Mac is a pain. Having to perform a reach around on my Mac Mini every time I want to connect or disconnect something is really frustrating. And when it comes to storage, I just didn't buy enough of it when I purchased the Mac Mini. I spec'd out my model with 16 gigabits of RAM and 512 gigabytes of storage. That much storage was fine to begin with, but it filled up really quickly. I really wish I'd paid a wee bit more for more storage when buying, as you're no doubt aware, you cannot change the SSD drives in Macs once you've purchased them. So how does this thing fix those problems? The Satechi Type-C Hub is designed to sit beneath the M1 Mac Mini. The top of it has this shaped recess so that the Mac Mini fits snugly on top, and once it's there, it doesn't move around. The hub connects to the Mac Mini via USB-C. Yes, you are losing the use of one of the Thunderbolt ports on the back, but what you gain from that, I think, is worth giving that port up. Along the front of the Satechi hub are SD and micro SD card slots, a 3.5mm headphone jack, three USB-A 3.0 data ports, and one USB-C 3.0 data port. For me, there are a couple of really big advantages to this setup. The inclusion of SD card slots is amazing, and as someone who has used external mirrorless cameras for many years creating videos for this channel, the convenience of this is fantastic. Satachi so say that the three USB-A ports on the front of the device are data only and they specifically warn you not to try and charge an iPad with them, for some reason. Personally, I've had no issues attaching audio interfaces, external hard drives, or USB keyboards, sometimes all three simultaneously, and having them all operate exactly as they should. Same goes for the USB-C port here, I was able to attach external SSDs and audio interfaces without any problems. Not only are all these extra ports ridiculously handy, they're all situated right on the front of the device, making attaching and detaching different gear easy peasy. Buying extra storage from Apple when you're first configuring the Mac that you want to buy from them is really bloody expensive. If you wanted to upgrade the base model Mac Mini's paltry 
gigabyte storage to one terabyte, say, it would cost you a whopping £400. This is why, as I mentioned earlier, I went for the 512 gigabyte model. Well, there's a wee secret compartment on the bottom of this Hitachi Type-C hub where you can install an M.2 SATA SSD drive. Your Mac will see this drive as long as you've got the hub attached and it's a much more wallet-friendly way of increasing your storage. Now, only M.2 SATA SSDs are compatible. Faster NVMe drives are not compatible with this hub, unfortunately. Having said that, M.2 storage is definitely speedy enough that you can load all of your GarageBand and Logic projects onto it, then open and edit them without any noticeable drop in speed or lag when compared to the built-in Apple storage. I grabbed this 1TB Western Digital Red M.2 SSD for just over £100 on Amazon, and it's been brilliant so far. Satach, you do have a really helpful list of compatible M.2 SSDs on their website. I'll put a link to that down in the description, and if you could give that like button a gentle love tap on the way past, I'd really appreciate it. It's worth noting that if you like the look of this hub but don't need the extra storage, there is a version available without the SSD compartment and it's a wee bit cheaper. I'll be completely honest with you, I was really close to forking out over two grand last month for a new Mac Studio, as I needed more ports, more storage, and the thought of all that extra power, even though I really wouldn't be able to make use of it, was very nice. Luckily, I regained my sanity long enough to have a look around the internet to see if any other expansion options existed, and oh boy am I glad I did. I've managed to vastly expand my port selection and triple my existing storage capacity for under £200 all in. I genuinely love this thing and would highly recommend it to any Mac Mini user who, like me, needs more ports and or more storage. You'll find links to the Satechi Hub and the SSD that I grabbed down in the description. And make sure to stick around and find out why everybody is buying this.